Okay, we're going to call the uh, July 20th meeting to order. Uh, I'll ask everybody to stand and, and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to note for the record, uh, Mr. Trade was late. Ms. Graham is not going to be with us. And May or may not be with us, but he may or may not be late. Next item of, the, of business on the agenda is the approval of the July 5th uh, uh, minutes. Are there any changes or corrections? Mr. Ruff, I'm surprised. I don't see your name. You, you were there. Recollection of you being. He was. I was. I have a clear recollection of him too. I and have checked that one actually. I have video evidence. And that's that's the only change I made. Or that's. I'm sorry. Let, let me rephrase that. That's the only correction I found. Are there any others? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Miss Jordan, is there a second? I'll second. Miss Johnson, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes. Has anybody ever voted against approving the minutes? Okay, we have, a, sure. we have a presentation tonight from Ms. Paige Huff Huffman from the Fountain Hill Elementary School. Good days, it's packed to the brim. Um, and on 
serve many, many more individuals and families. So an idea for establishing um, a formalized food pantry up at the school uh, started in a conversation with members of the Cathedral Church of the Nativity uh, almost two years ago, the fall of 2020. Uh, we started having conversations with Second Harvest Food Bank of the Lehigh Valley, and, and they instructed us that in order to move forward with the pantry sponsored by their organization, that we would be required to have sponsoring 501c3. Um, and so was born the Fountain Hill Community Grocery Partnership. So this organization um, has really begun extensive work with the goal of organizing construction and eventually operating function of a full-scale state-of-the-art food pantry at Fountain Hill. Uh, this has involved a very collaborative effort through members of the Church of the Nativity, Lehigh University, uh, Fountain Hill Elementary and the Plum Area School District, um, as well as community stakeholders. So we are formally partnered now with Second Harvest. Um, we've met with them several times and have completed their application process to move forward uh, with their support. Um, and we've also taken steps to explore various local food pantries um, to get a sense of construction design and pantry layout, uh, volunteer management, and um, so we've done numerous visits to different pantry sites with, within the Lehigh Valley, across the Lehigh Valley. Um, this project uh, has come in at about $240,000. Um, we are seeking still to fundraise for the project through grants, through corporate donors, um, through foundations. Uh, the City of Bethlehem has tentatively agreed to sponsor the project as well. And we're looking right now at still fundraising close to $70,000 for the construction and equip equipping of the pantry space. Initially, the pantry will supply the backpack of this program at the school with the goal of increasing the number of families that we can serve. Uh, but we're hoping that by next year, the pantry will be fully operational and open to the greater South Bethlehem community. Uh, the parameters will be set by Second Harvest as far as um, income verification and address verification, uh, but the school will be the, the hub for the pantry, hopefully, in the future. Uh, does anybody have any questions? So I just saw that Fountain Hill Elementary is on the list, uh, one of the top schools to be redone. Um, how is that going to affect what you're building for the pantry? <laughs> uh, excellent question. Um, one that we've asked many times. So we've been in uh, very deep And those initial conversations more than once included what happens when Fountain Hill, if and when Fountain Hill Elementary gets rebuilt. Uh, what we were instructed um, is that in the event that they decided today Fountain Hill's getting rebuilt, uh, from that decision until instead opening the doors to a brand new school could be at least seven years. Um, and that conversation is not on the table in any formal way quite yet. Um, we're hopeful that this pantry will set a framework for a new building. Um, we feel strongly that a new building will no question have a food pantry space um, as a community school, uh, as a hub of, of the community as a whole. We feel that that is a priority area and Mr. Stein agrees that a pantry in the interim will serve both our school community and the larger neighborhood as well. Thank you for your question. Are there any other questions? At this time, do the students that do require use of the food pantry, do they go down to Brockle? Is that where they go? Or No, we're supplying our highest needs students with food. Okay. Um, in situations where, so those students who are identified as highest, highest need, uh, really there's no proof that they need to provide besides filling out kind of a waiver form to participate. Um, and those referrals are made <coughs> through our teachers, through our guidance counselors, and really just through knowing our so those families are getting food every week supplied by Fountain Hill, um, and we're also supplying emergency food for situations where families uh, are exper experiencing some sort of urgent need. Just to summarize a little bit of the conversation that Ms. Hoffman and I had is um, obviously there's building costs associated with it, so there's permit costs and whatnot. Um, we've kind of decided, myself, Mr. Berger, and 
Mr. Zayner that uh, getting in the business of conditionally granting waivers for uh, building permit fees is a slippery slope because obviously this is a very, we can all probably agree, this is a very worthwhile endeavor, but the next 501c3 project to them is also very worthwhile and then you get in the uh, potential legal issues of who you're granting to and who you're not. So um, one of the things that I had suggested to her uh, in addition to making the presentation tonight is obviously they're, they're actively fundraising and you know, certainly the, the borough is, it, we know where our, our financial base is, but one of the things that certainly would uh, circumvent that is, is you know, potentially a, a donation that would then cover what their costs are. So we're not granting them a waiver, but we're we would be donating money towards this endeavor. And again, there's no action item tonight, but just kind of where my head was at with, with one of the ways that keeps us out of a murky legal situation in the future. Well, I would have two questions. I, it, it's not a budgeted item, so I don't know if we could do it this year, but we could put it in the budget next year. But the real question is, is this a, 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 an allowable expense under the borough code? Yeah, to a donation to the, the 501c3, well, the school district, we'd, I'd actually have to look at that, um, that it's, but I don't, I don't think it's specifically precluded in the borough code, um, and, you know, there's also uh, the discretionary unappropriated balance for this year, should council so choose, uh, depending on the, the amount of uh, money, but again, this, this is purely, I wanted her to come in and make the presentation tonight, um, if council so wishes, we can find out the logistics on the back end and what's allowable and, and how it would all work out. Well, I think it's something our our solicitor could could look into, not spend a lot of time on it. But I, I know from time to time other expenditures have been discussed, and we were told no, it's not allowed under the borough code. That's why I just want to make sure we're not running afoul of the law. No, I'm, I'm sure in one of the 62 conversations I have with Mr. Berger on a weekly basis, we can we can <laughs> we can bridge this topic. All right, is there anything else you need from us to not tonight, Ms. Hoffman? Thank you very much for, you. For, for, for coming. Mr. President, can I ask something? Sure. What are we looking at for permit costing? Um, I, I don't know that I've, I've actually heard the number. Uh, so I don't know until we see it, actually. I, it depend, it's all dependent on the scope of work. Is this sub $1,000 range? Is this, is this over $1,000 range? It, again, I think it depends upon the scope of work. It, it really does. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very difficult to answer that question depending on if there's, you know, what they're, I, I haven't seen their plans yet. If they're building so. a standalone building, I think it's going to be much more than if they're. No, you're just rehabbing a space, right? Rehabbing a space, right. So, but then electrical is dependent on the amount of outlets. If there's plumbing, that costs, that, I mean, there's, calculating a permit cost is like a, you need an abacus. So understood. I just I didn't know if we if we had like a running just an idea. No, I mean and I think once we see all that again, I just wanted to see if you know I wanted to allow her to come in and make the presentation, and then we can have discussion and you know if everybody's in agreement. I'll sort out with Mr. Berger and the borough code, and uh, also when the permits come through to Mr. Zayner, we'll have a we'll have to calculate it to them so that I can report back with that as well. Understood. And I think it's something we should de definitely talk about. It's a worth worthwhile cause. All right, thank you very much. Now, moving on, the privilege of the floor. Anybody wish to address council on an agenda item? Seeing and hearing none, draft resolutions for review. Resolution number 2022-24, a resolution setting forth the degradation fee pursuant to chapter 21, streets and sidewalks, section 305 of the Code of Ordinances of the Borough of Fountain Hill. The last time the fees were set, I believe, was 2016, and I think it's time to update them. Mr. Correct, and there was a, so the degradation fee is separate from the, uh, well, what will be discussed in the next resolution, the uh, excavation fee, which everyone gets charged for an excavation in the cartway, um, the cartway being the street. This is, not so much a deterrent because if you're going to dig your lateral, you have to dig your lateral. But what it does is it, it allows us to recoup some uh, funds from someone cutting into uh, new pavement and 
allows us to, to kind of put that away in a rainy day fund for when, you know, seven years from now that sinks. So, but yes, the old figures, like Mr. Blatt alluded to, the old figures were um, from 2016 and there was some question about how they intermeshed and were relevant. Uh, so this makes it a little bit more digestible for the folks who were uh, assigned with applying these costs to permits. Um, and also is in line with what a cost would be um, for us you know, moving forward. I get no action tonight. This is just a draft. We, we segregated the two that were on for action at the fifth meeting when I was not here uh, that was tabled um, just because it didn't fully address some of the confusion. So we went back to the drawing board and these two are the product of that one. Anybody have any comments now? And does anybody object to it being put on the August 1st agenda? Okay, we'll put it on the August 1st agenda and I pass it then perhaps. Very good. Next uh, item for a draft or a resolution is resolution number 2022-25, a, a resolution amending the resolution 2022-05 fee schedule to adjust the street excavation escrow fee. This is, I, I believe, to clean up some language and, uh, and to make it more uh, user-friendly, I think. Yeah, and it also uh, addressed, previously the escrow fee was a $1,000 flat fee. So if you dug up a trench that is you know, 100, 10 square feet versus 100 square feet, you were paying the same $1,000. So what this does is it sets the, the fee at $750 uh, up to 100 square feet and then anything over that, so 100 square feet to 10 by 10, um, anything over that is $5 for each additional square foot. So it really gives you, for those larger in the street excavations, it gives us an amount in escrow that would actually cover uh, if the contractor did not do the appropriate remediation of the street. Um, it also allow, defines the definition of completion as six months after the actual uh, pavement hits the ground because what you see is a lot of these come in they look great that day and the sub base wasn't adequately compacted and in two months we've now got a you know sunken patch in the street and then the borough is going out and paying to re redo that so this will release that escrow fee back to the the uh, applicant but it will do so at six months to ensure that their contractor did the work uh, appropriately Anybody have any questions about that? Anybody object to put it, this on the August 1st agenda? Please do so. Will do. That's the last one of those. And there are no draft ordinances for, for review. We're now up to old business. The playground update. I see we're up to over, a, over 100 children uh, having registered. Uh, that's correct. And what we're seeing is obviously when you drive by there, you're not seeing a, a, a hundred kids there at one time but we've got a lot of folks who do you know they bring their kids Tuesdays and Thursdays um, and in fact we have a gentleman who is donating every Thursday some some Gatorade and stuff because his kids are having such a wonderful time coming Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, so the, the program is uh, by all accounts been a, a tremendous success um, you know based on the council's feedback from the last meeting you know the, the windows and doors have been open so um, even though clearly with a hundred kids signed up no one seemed to have a problem with knowing we were open but again it's it, it, it just looks more open and inviting and they've got the staff to do it so there are two employees on tonight um, I asked the same question Mr. Blatt asked me earlier which is um, do we really need two more but they don't all work every day much like the kids um, some of them work you know Monday Wednesday Friday some of them can only do Tuesdays and Thursdays at night so this um, will get us to a point where these are the last two and then we'll consider accepting community service volunteers from the high schools or uh, you know, who want to use that for their, their hours. Um, but other than that, this, this will get us to a point where we can adequately manage uh, and cover all the nights so we don't have any closures with vacations and stuff from the, our employees. And although I was only there once, I plan on going sometime this weekend, and uh, it, it seems to be going very well, although it was very hot too. <laughs> How, speaking of hot, uh, are we selling a lot of pool passes? I asked, uh, so Kathy from Hellertown asked me that uh, Monday, and actually I 
forward it to, to Carol to answer. Do you know what that number, have we sold any since that initial eight? Okay. Just for me, you know, I think all together, like nine, 15. That's sad. Well, now you can swim in Allentown for free. I saw that in the paper. 14 or under or 60 or over. For Allentown, I don't know. Was it? Yeah, it's only residents. They do that historically, like when I, it, the heat index hits 100, they've done that in years past, but yeah, it's got those stipulations to it, city residents and kids and, yeah, seniors. Okay, the next item on that business is community coalition a meeting. It was uh, July the 9th, I believe. Uh, Mr. Brook was there, I was there, and Mr. Trable was there. Mr. Zofko has a very ambitious schedule, or l let me rephrase that has very ambitious plans, and I hope, I, I wish him well. I hope, he, I hope he can make it work. So we met tonight uh, with the rec committee. Uh, Jamie, do you just wanna give a quick? Oh, sure. I mean, or I can, it just, yeah. I didn't wanna steal your. No, we met, um, we met with Mr. Zothko and some members of the community coalition. We had a good discussion on what was needed to fix the pool, um, what was what our biggest, uh, what the biggest issues are as far as getting the pool operating. Um, and then just ideas for um, raising money, having different kind of community events. The community coalition is not just interested in saving the pool, although that's their immediate number one um, goal. Um, but uh, they're looking at community days, um, a weekend to do something like that. Um, different ideas to have at the pool once it is open. Uh, we talked about grant possibilities, um, doing some research on that. They're going to look into that. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. We did talk about some, I have some ideas, so um, I think we'll, uh, I'll work pretty closely with Mike going forward to just kind of share some of that and see if we can plan things um, a little bit better. Maybe some things are more uh, better for the borough to run and maybe some things are better for them to run until they're up and running as a full 501c3. Um, we talked about a couple of other things, but mostly surrounding the pool. They will be having meetings, um, about, I think they said every other week, um, up at the playground, possibly um, inside the, the pool to uh, get a look at that um, if they need some, a tour, I think if they need to see it. I'm pretty sure we could make that happen so they can see what needs to be done. Um, as well. So yeah, it was a good meeting, uh, productive, and they do have an ambitious plans, um, and I'm, I'm hoping it'll all work out for them. I'm excited. I'd like to see some things come back to the borough. I, I, I would also. Yeah, his request for the meeting tonight, and that kind of the impetus for it was that, you know, we're, they're trying to move from that conceptual stage to uh, putting some things in motion, but again, you know, obviously it's our property, uh, all of these things, the playground, the park, the so just kind of trying to, to align where our thoughts are, um, at least from you know, the, the Recreation Committee standpoint, as trying to get moving forward versus keep talking about this conceptually because uh, we are all already almost in August. So Yeah, anything they do will, will be in the next uh, fiscal year. Yeah, I believe the next general meeting, I think he said it was just around the end of September, beginning, or the end of August, beginning of September. Next item is the Jeter Avenue reconstruction. I see that's going to begin next week. Yeah, so th that moved uh, very quickly. The project was uh, awarded. Um, the block grant time stipulations are pretty stringent, so there was not a lot of lead time. Um, and once the contractor's in, they have four weeks to complete it. So they're telling us three to four weeks to complete it. They will start Monday. Uh, they're using a subcontractor, subcontractor, easy for me to say, to come in and mill the road off first thing Monday. So the road will be all the way down to dirt. Um, and then they're gonna start doing their concrete and curb and sidewalk while they rebuild the sub base to the road. Uh, so it will be completely impassable 24 seven uh, until they get to a point where they may be able to you know, get a base coat of asphalt down and then open it up when they're not working. Uh, so it starts Monday, the homeowner notification was made this week by the contractor. I spoke to uh, several of the residents myself uh, about you know, some of the logistics and uh, we're working through this, a lady who has handicap issues. So Jason is, is setting up a temporary uh, spot for her. So um, 
all in all, I think you know the, the residents appreciate the the inconvenience for a couple of weeks to, to get a nice new road and their sidewalk replaced. So um, things seem to be moving forward on that, and you know I'll report hopefully uh, progress come eight one. Has this been discussed with the with the fire and the police where the emergency vehicles can get in there if necessary? So the interesting thing is going to be, I mean, we'll, we'll get I'll get the fire truck in there if there's a house fire. But uh, for police vehicles, I mean, that's going to be quite a drop down because we're taking it all the way down to the dirt. So um, I will make sure that once we had that, we were waiting for the absolute confirmation that Monday was the day and we got that today that uh, it will be. So we've already let the hospital know uh, and I will get everything out to police, fire, and EMS uh, tomorrow. No, nope, they're, they're, their subcontractor is coming in for one day and they are going to mill the whole thing off. That block is going to be down to dirt um, by Monday, supposedly by Monday evening. So it'll be uh, it'll be tough to bounce a police car down there. I mean, if they have to, they will, and we'll, we'll be able to work some way out to get the fire truck in there um, if need be. But How long is the road going to be tied up? Uh, three or four weeks, they're telling us. But they seem to have all their materials, and, and I mean, they, we had the pre-con meeting last week, and they seem to be pretty squared away and ready to move forward. So, Do we have anything um, in place for trash pickup? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, Jason talked to Republic, um, and they were working, he was working those logistics out with the, the residents and, and the hauler going to either end of the block. I mean, luckily it's not a huge block, so they should be able to, to mitigate that. All right. Uh, any, are there any other items of old business we need to talk about? There's nothing listed for new business, and we have to be very careful not to violate the Sunshine Law, but is there anybody have anything new? Can I talk about something? Sure. Um, there was some discussion amongst the wonderful Facebook groups that we have out there about um, better communication um, for, for small events. Um, I know that we have, we've used Nixle in the past, I think, Chief, we've used? We've yeah, we, we have the free Nixle. So like, I, I was wondering if we could get um, more I, of those. I have a meeting with Nixle for the paid version on Monday with the folks who can show me it and give me a price, so. Um, That's lovely. Yeah, so we're, we're still working. I mean, I think we talked about this, what, maybe a month or two ago, and I, I've viewed a number of uh, products that are out there. Um, each of them are wonderful in their own ways. Uh, the two driving factors that I'm looking at is one, can somebody other than Eric figure out how to use it? And two, because I mean, ideally you'd be able to, you know, Cordulo or any of the ladies up front, like we do blasting out otherwise. The other thing is obviously cost. You know, we want to buy, we want to spend money on something that's going to fit our needs, but we also don't want to buy the Cadillac when, you know, the, the Chevy is going to work exactly. So I'm really just trying to find that Chevy. Um, so the uh, yeah, I agree that we could definitely. There's products out there that would enable us to efficiently, with our workforce, better communicate. It's just finding that right one and that that. Sure. Cool. Thank you very much, Chief. You had something to say. Yeah. Well, we we have no idea what PennDOT does on those roads. They close roads. They don't oh, call us. They don't contact us. They don't tell us what's going to be closed, when it's going to be closed. So anybody that's expecting a, a next will come out on that, it's not going to, it's not going to happen because we don't know. Um, and day by day, it's different things that are blocked off, um, and it's just navigating your way around. Yeah, I think that like the the, the road closure things. I think that people in those groups are pretty well versed in the fact that PennDOT and and Fountain Hill have communication, but it's pretty limited, and PennDOT kind of just does what they want. Um, I mean, objectively, shout out to PennDOT. Um, but I think that there's other things, like, if, if, like for example, like the, the Jeter Road closure, like we're looking at, at a project possibly in, you know, in this time frame, please be aware, or residents of Jeter, you know, you could bring your trash to yada, yada, yada. Even things like, you know, uh, found dogs and found cats and stuff like that, I think can go on Nixle. I know that I get a lot from Lower Saucon. I get a ton, a ton from Lower Saucon. Yeah, Lower, Lower Saucon is a huge user of Nixle, and that's one when I talk to their rep for their little 15-minute uh, pre-meeting. Is yeah, I mean Lower Saucon blasts out a ton of them. And the nice thing, one of the nice things about Nixle is that the paid version is that Lower Saucon has is you link it to social media, 
you link it to yeah, that's um, a great idea. everybody who signs up. You know, and, and that's that's the other thing is is getting folks. I mean, Chief, how many did you tell me you have signed up for the free next? Like 120. So it's getting that out that that voice out there. I mean, when we picked, I was involved in the selecting the one that Allentown ended up using for emergency management notification, and it's a phenomenal, robust system. But the push is getting people to sign up for it. And our uh, UB Max, which is our uh, utility billing software, they have a notification system. However, we talked about it, and we're, we're actually in discussions with them, but the problem there is they pull from your utility database. Well, what's 40 or 50, no, I mean, 47% of the borough is renters. So if I'm notifying the owner of the property who lives not here, he one isn't going to want that and he's going to call us and tell us to take his name off that and two it's certainly not going to get to the residents so what we're trying to figure out is, is does their product offer a portal that we can push out to folks to go sign up or we can sign them up here for the folks who may not have a computer at home and, and make that easy um, and so that's there's all those factors in looking something in something and and i, I wish there was that great aha product out there that we could find. Because some of them, like one I looked at, like you could draw a polygon on a map in GIS around the block of Jeter. You pick your area and it anybody who's registered in that circle gets notified. So you don't necessarily need to, like, and, and that's just an example, but if you want to just blast out about your trash, like, so those types of things, they're great, but it's a $5,000 annual subscription, and it's probably too complex for anybody other yeah. than someone who knows GIS to use it, so. But I agree with you, I mean, we can definitely do better, and there's options out there to do better. Understood, thank you. Yeah. Anything else on that? Moving along, we have two action items tonight. They're very similar. A motion to approve the hiring of Haley Zerinsky, I believe it is. As a part-time seasonal recreational assistant at the rate of 15 an hour, I assume she has all the required clearances? We got her final clearance today, so she has all of her paperwork in and complete. Is there a motion to approve her hiring? So moved. Second. Uh, okay, Mr. Trable second, and Ms. Jordan or Ms. Johnson? Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson making the motion. Are there any questions on that? Hearing none, Ms. Jordan. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Rook? Yes. Mr. Trotter? Yes. Mr. Trable? Yes. And Mr. Black says yes. The next action item is this, the motion to approve the hiring of Lauren Galena as a part-time seasonal recreation assistant, at the, also at the rate of $15 an hour, and I assume she has all of her required clearances. Yes, she was the overachiever. She already had them when she applied. This is a good thing. So I moved. All right, that's Miss Jordan. That's Miss Jordan. Is there a second? I'll second. Miss Johnson. Any other questions on the motion? Hearing none. Mr. Trable. Yes. Miss Miss Jordan. Yes. Miss Johnson. Yes. Mr. Roof. Yes. Mr. Trotter. Yes. Mr. Butt says yes. It's, it's easier to go that way. All right. Um, there, there are no other action items. Privilege of the floor. Anybody wish to address council on any issue? Seeing and hearing none, there is no executive session tonight. Uh, before we adjourn, I want to thank the people for coming out tonight. I thank again the people watching us on uh, Facebook, I think it is. It is. And I want to remind everybody our next meeting is August the 1st. And uh, if, uh, everyone's encouraged to come. It's the regular um, meeting where, the, where the, the agenda will be a bit he heavier. Uh, having said that, the next item is the adjournment. Uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Ms. Johnson, is there a second? Mr. Trey, we'll have a standing vote. Thank you for coming out. We'll see you August 1st.